Welcome to Points of Topology Part 1, Module 38 today. So, we are going to study compactness and Lindelof properties in the larger topic of smallness properties of topological spaces. We will start with the definition. Take a topological space X and a subset A. Recall that a family UI of subsets of X is called a cover for A if A is contained in the union of UIs. So, this family will be called an open cover if in addition each member UI is an open subset of X. By a sub cover of a given family, the family must be a cover, sub cover means what? for a given set A, we mean a subfamily of UI which is a cover for it. It is a subfamily and it is a cover, so that will be a sub cover. Now we make a proper definition. Subset A is called compact if for every open cover of A, we have a finite sub cover for A. Likewise, we say A is Lindelof if every open cover for A has a countable sub cover. Remember countable includes finite therefore by this definition compact will be automatically Lindelof. But Lindelof may not be compact right because countable includes counter infinite also. So compactness Lindelofness but Lindelofness may not imply compact. However, because of the similarity, these two concepts can be studied together to some extent. Lots of more properties will be there for compact spaces, which are not true for Lindelof spaces in general. Okay, Most of the properties for Lindelof spaces will be automatically true for compact spaces. So compact spaces are Lindelof properties. A topological space is called compact or Lindelof if it is compact of Lindelof as a subset of a given space. So, if the whole space, if X is the whole space, A itself is equal to X, then what is the meaning of that? A being a compact subset, same thing as compact space. That is what it is. It is immediate that a subset is compact if it only lives as a subspace, as a space, as a take subspace topology that is a topological space which is a compact or Lindelof. These two concepts are the same because the subspace topology if UIs are open subsets in a, in a given a, UI intersection A those will be open subsets inside A that will form a cover. Whenever that sub cover is there from A intersection UIs the corresponding UIs if you take that will be a sub cover for the original thing and so on. So going uh, to the subspace and back to the space is immediate. So, compact space is the same thing as being a compact subspace of a given space. That is no problem. Also, it is immediate from the definition that a closed subset of a compact space, see every time I am saying something of a compact space, it is true for Lindelof, I am writing it in the bracket here. So, here a closed subset of a Lindelof space is Lindelof, a closed subset of a compact space is compact. Okay. Similarly, it follows that a finite union of compact spaces is compact. When you take Lindelof, of course finite union of Lindelof space is compact, you can say more, namely any countable union of countable union of Lindelof space is also Lindelof. Okay. Now, let us do this little more carefully. Why take all open subsets? Let us see whether we can do it some economically. Start the topological space. Suppose B is a base for the topology. 
then x is compact or lindell of respect to the friend only if every cover of x by members of b admits a finite sub cover admits a countable sub cover respect instead of every open cover we are having now covers which are coming from members are coming from a given base so family ui is a sub family of b that much i can assume if that is true for all sub families of b itself then it will be true for all open covers so this is the lemma here let us see how this is true clearly if you have members of b they are also open they must admit finite that is all right but why that is sufficient is what we have to see to start with the condition that uj be an open cover for x i have to produce a finite sub cover okay under the assumption that for a basic open subset this said this is true okay for each point x in x this x will be in one of the uj's that j will depend upon x so i write the uj x select one x is inside uj x for uj x being j x being one of the these j's okay but by the definition of a base what happens there will be a member of this curly b namely bx such that x is in bx and bx is contained in u of gx when you vary x all these bx's form an open cover for x but that are members of this curly b only the basis okay so that will admit a finite sub cover means bx1 bx2 bx n so these will cover the whole of x but now each bxi i can replace by uxjs ujxis so they will cover the entire of x so i have got a finite sub cover exactly if you uh, if you allow this one to be countable here instead of i ring 1 to n i 1 to infinity 1 to infinity a countable sub cover then you get lindell of property okay <coughs> now another important thing is to investigate what happens under continuous maps okay the image of a compact set in lindell of space under a continuous map is compact respectively lindell of so i will now on don't say this lindell of part at all this will be automatic and it will be written down here okay so the proof will be also exactly similar and so on so let us look at how why this is compact and so on you start with a a contained inside x b contained inside y x and y are topological spaces <coughs> and f from a to b is a continuous function such that f of a is b that is surjective continuous function okay i have to show that if a is compact then b is compact okay assuming that a is compact how to show b is compact okay b is a compact subset of y so take an open cover of y take an open cover of b the open subsets of y f inverse of those will be open subsets of x and they will cover a because f of a is inside b f of a is actually equal to b right so start with the uj uh, ui i inside j open cover of b that each f inverse of u i intersection b is open in a and a equal to i i range one of f inverse of u i intersection b okay i take f inverse of u i itself i can take then intersection with a is the same thing as take f inverse of u i intersection b because f is not defined on the whole of x i don't say f inverse of b i i have to take a intersection here f may not be defined on the whole of x that is not necessary f is defined only on a that's why i am writing this otherwise it is just f inverse of u i okay so this is an open cover now f is a is compact so i will get a finite sub cover okay therefore the finite sub cover 
so i is a sub finite subset of this such that a is inside union of v i s i belong to i what are these v i s v i s are v i this uh, f inverse of u i s okay <coughs> i have put f inverse of u i intersection b as v i s it's an a v i s because these are open subsets of a means what they are v i intersection where v i s are open inside x okay if f for defined on the whole of x i could have taken f inverse of u i as v i here i have to separately uh, say what these v i s are okay so this will let me take a finite sub cover here a intersection v i it follows that b will be inside the union of now corresponding u i s here where this i will run only over i okay after all this vi is are just dummies here to show that this is uh, an open subset in a so so an immediate consequence is that is compactness and the land of our topological property what does that mean that means if you have homeomorphism from x to y if x is compact then y is compact and conversely <coughs> so that is the meaning of topological property you don't need homeomorphism you just need continuous surjective map a is compact f of a is compact a is linear of f of a is linear of so that will show that compactness and linear of nessar topological properties okay so notice that it just means that the compactness of subset is a topological space does not depend where a is taken as a subset okay a may be a topological space it may be subspace of some y it may be subspace of some x it may be subspace of some the moment a is compact in one of them it will be always compact at a space itself and then it will be compact in every other every other space so it is independent of being a subset of something okay the same remark holds for little of property connectivity path connectivity etc if you think they are topological ones the something are topological properties the topological space where it is embedded is immaterial so now we have proved a, a theorem about quotient maps with the uh, strong uh, proper uh, property namely if each fiber is connected and the base space is connected then the total space is connected x to y is a surjective map all right y is uh, compact y is connected when is x is connected so there was a conos theorem this 3.39 similar to that we may expect if y is compact and all the fibers here f inverse of y are compact will x be compact okay the answer is no even under a stronger assumption that f is an open mapping open surjective is quite strong you can assume it's closed mapping also closed surjective even then this will not be true namely a very simple example is here take the Open interval minus one to close one. It's half closed. Minus one open, plus one close. Take this open interval to zero one close interval. What is the map? Eta x equal to x square. X equal to x square. That's surjective. Okay. Is it an open mapping? If you have an open interval here, what will be the image of this open interval? Open interval, open interval, or half open on this side, one closed. What will be the image of those? Will that be open subsets of of zero one? You see, you can't take uh, some epsilon, some r here less than one. Then the open interval will have to be um, open subset of the open interval itself. okay but if you take one close one also then you can take the closed interval also that will be still an open subset of the half closed interval 
the but the image will be a half closed interval layer half open interval layer so that will be open subset of of uh, zero one right so eta x is both an open mapping as well as a closed mapping it is surjective inverse image of every point here is just one point or two points depending upon if it's zero inverse image is zero any other point there will be two points here okay there are two square roots so fibers are all compact the image is a closed interval it's compact but we know that half closed intervals like this are non compact so very easy example okay in fact you can produce based on this one you can produce many such examples indeed in application this is what causes a problem so you have to be careful of exactly precisely this one what you have actually done is you look at the full thing here if you take minus 1 to plus 1 closed interval that will be compact that will include all the solutions what you have done is certain solutions are missing here right so that is the one which causes problems okay this precisely the way how the the expected diameter here why is compact fibers are compact why x may not be compact okay so keep this my example in mind so one of the consequence of this example is that we cannot two compactness of product of two compact spaces in a similar way as we have done it connectedness remember connectedness x cross y x and y connected x cross y uh, uh, connected which can be proved in different ways the simpler way is to take the quotient map from x cross y to y apply that theorem y is connected the fibers are x cross singleton y right for each y so they are all connected because they are homeomorphic to x therefore the, the entire thing the total space which is x cross y that will be connected so that kind of proof is not possible here is what this example says to us okay so we have to do little more work here and that gives us a beautiful theorem here called valles theorem which will be used elsewhere also okay so what us go through this valles theorem x be a compact space then for every topological space y and a point y inside y and an open subset v of x cross y such that this v is a neighborhood of is capital x cross singleton y suppose if you have this situation so x is a sub x cross singleton y is a subspace right of x cross capital y the v is a subspace which is a neighborhood of which is open open subset to neighborhood x cross y. then you have some kind of a uniform neighborhood is what it is provided this x is compact compact so what is that in a uniformity there exists a open neighborhood n which is i am writing n y depends upon y inside y such that this entire x cross n itself will be contained inside v so every neighborhood has a unique single neighborhood of this point so that the whole x cross n will be contained inside v this is the kind of uniformity uniform neighborhood comes it is like this n little y is uniform epsilon if you write epsilon y here that will depend upon the y point y here now this capital n does not depend upon any of them for all x cross y this is this is uh, the same thing that is what it says okay so Uh, the proof will uh, actually give you better view of why i call that uniformity and so on for each x comma y as x varies x cross y inside 
contained inside V by definition of product topology, you will get open subsets U x and V x. In if you have matrix basis, you could have got epsilon and epsilon x, epsilon y, and so on. So now I have to write no metric here. Some open subsets U x, V x, and x cross y, x as well as y. Sorry, not x cross y. Respectively, such that if you take the product x y will be x y will be a neighborhood of uh, u x cross v x will be neighborhood of x comma y, and that neighborhood is contained inside the open subset V. That is the meaning of an open subset in the product space, right? So these are basic open subsets here. By compactness of x, okay, what happens? We will get finitely many x i s such that x is contained inside i into 1 to n u x i s because as x varies over x, u x i s will cover the whole of x. So, they will get a finite. Now, put n equal to this will depend upon the second coordinate y for each of them, the y is fixed here. That is why I am not writing u x y, v x y, and so on. I am just writing u x v x n equal to. n y which is intersection of the corresponding v x 1 v x 2 v x n u depending upon u x 1 u x 2 v x n here right so take the intersection finite intersection of open subsets will be an open subset all of them see v x is for all v x they are neighborhoods of y okay so intersection of all of them finitely many of them that n is a neighborhood of y. So, we claim that it is x cross n is inside v now. So, this is a typical way you take the union here, you take the corresponding intersection there. Okay. So, why this is contained inside v? Look at any x comma z inside x cross n. Z is in the intersection means z is in each, each v x size. Okay. So, choose an i such that x is in one of the u x i's. Then u x i cross v x i is inside v. So, x comma z is inside v. That is all. Okay. So, Valle's theorem says that if you have a slice which is a compact space inside of x cross y, take a slice, I mean x cross little some y, a neighborhood of that you can take uniformly. Okay, one single neighborhood of y cross the whole of x will be contained in that neighborhood. So, this will be very useful in proving many other things also. So, we are going to use that one also here in the proof of product of two compact spaces compact. Now, you notice that I have stopped telling about Lindelof. If you take Lindelof, what you get is you will get some somewhere countable infinite things may may get. Intersection of infinitely many open subsets may not be open. So that is where these results will not be true for Lindelof spaces. Okay, so we are we are not uh, having those results for Lindelof spaces. Okay, so x and y are compact, then x cross y is compact. How does it prove that? Start with an open cover of x cross y. For each y inside y, singleton x cross y is compact, right? And this u i s will cover that also. Therefore, you will get a finite subset j y that depend upon little y contained inside j such that x cross y is contained in the op uh, open cover. Which is sub sub family or uh, uh, defending on J Y S only Y S I is a J Y union of all those U I S. So let us call that open set V Y. It depends upon Y. Now this is true for every Y. X cross Y is inside V I. If I range Y, that will cover the whole of X. So before that, before that, since X cross Y is contained inside V I. I am going to use Valle's theorem here now. By Valle's theorem, there exists an open subset NY of Y such that X cross Y is contained inside X cross NY contained inside BY. 
I don't have to take this uh, funny vy, but I can take now ny's and forget about x. So these ny's as y varies over capital y, they will cover capital y. That is compact. So I get a finite limit y1, y2, yk such so that y is contained inside union of ny i, i rate 1 to k. Okay. Now take i equal to the corresponding jy1, jy2, jyk, take the union of those. So that is a subset of capital J. Okay. Each jyi is finite set and this is the finite union. So capital I is a finite subset of capital J. The claim is that if you take now only UIs inside I, this finite set, that will cover the whole of X cross Y. And that's very straightforward. Start with any X comma Y in X cross Y. This Y will be in one of the NYIs because Y is contained in NYIs here. Then X cross Y will be contained in X cross NYY, but that is contained inside B, Y, J, corresponding Y, I, J, Y, I, whatever, Y, N, Y, J, I have written, okay, B, Y, J, okay, but B, Y, J, see, B, Y, J is union now, is U, I, right, where I is in the J, Y, J here, okay, one single set here, J, Y, J, and take the, those unions, so that is just a, a union of under J, Y, I's, Okay, so that is definitely contained in all the UIs where I range over capital I, where capital I is actually union of all JYJs. Okay, so I have shown that X cross Y is contained inside this union. Y is arbitrary, so the whole X cross Y is contained in that. That's all. So, product of two compact spaces, compact is what we have proved. Immediately it follows that finite product of compact space is compact. So if you have a finite product like this, then it's compact. Okay? And if X is compact, each XI is compact because they are uh, we can take the projection maps. So you have a product space like this is compact, if friend only if each factor is compact. Okay. So ultimately we want to prove this for arbitrary products. That is called Tignoff theorem. Okay. The theorem is true for infinite product as well. It goes under the name Tignoff theorem. But for that we will have to wait. Okay. But let us do a little more of compact space here. Tignoff theorem is a bit uh, special thing. We will do it on its own at a, its own time after uh, one or two more uh, modules. Let X be a compact project space, F1 contains F2 contains monotonically decreasing, it's a nest okay, of sequence of non-empty closed subsets. Okay. Remember such a thing we had in Cantor's intersection theorem wherein you had a complete metric space, then the diameters were going to 0, etc. Right? So here there is no metric, no diameter and so on. All that I assume is that instead of metric space, complete metric space, a compact topological space, then the intersection of all these FIs is non-empty. So here the proof is surprisingly much, much simpler than Cantor's intersection theorem. Even that was not very difficult anyway. All that I have to do is apply De Morgan's law. Fi's are closed, complement of Fi's are open. Fi's are decreasing, complements of Fi's are increasing union. Okay. Intersection is non empty, is what we want to show. It is the same thing as that union is not the whole of X. Is the same thing as intersection is non empty by De Morgan's law. If the union is the whole space, what you have got is 
an increasing sequence of open subsets such that the union is a whole space. X is compact, therefore it has a finite subcover. An increasing union of open subsets, the finite subcover means at one of the, the maximum one of maximum one you take, that itself will be X. What does that mean? One of the UIs itself is X, which means when you go to complement, those one of these FIs must be empty. But I have taken on empty closed subsets here. Okay, so that is the full proof. I have just given you a prior De Morgan's law. Rest of them you must be able to do anyway. Now I have told you that. All right. So next time we will do some more things about compact matrix spaces. Okay. Thank you.